Hey, welcome to our second installment here on our porting video series. I'm Ryan, the applications engineer here at Rottler. I'm at the Rottler factory here in Kent, Washington. Standing behind me is the EM69HP. That's our five axis uh, cylinder head porting and block work machining center. This video, we're going to take a look at uh, using the probe to collect the information for the port on our LS cylinder head that we loaded up in the first video. The easiest way to think about porting and the digitizing process is the information that we need to get for the port. The port uh, has you know, a, a start and an end point and you have a section in the middle. You know, we can think of that section in the middle as probably where the sharpest bend is. So what we need to do to basically the first step is we need to tell the machine where the entrance and exit is and where that middle location is. And we can use the probe to find three points in kind of each of those areas and we'll create three planes, right? Three points makes a plane. Uh, and so that's how we're gonna pick up those locations. So our three points, we're gonna use the the manifold surface, and then we'll use uh, right at the bottom of the seat, and then the easiest way to find the middle is we can use our tool, and we can manually just kind of stick it into the port, and we want to find the location kind of the farthest we can get in there uh, without touching the shank. The easiest way to do this process is to take a marker and the tool, and you can stick this in there, and you can stick your, your marker in from the other side, and you can just move this around and kind of approximate those three points and just make sure that you're not shanking out. And that'll get you close. Uh, and that way when you come back and, and jog the probe into the location, uh, you have kind of three, you can put three red dots and uh, that'll give you some visual references of where to be touching the probe. If I hop in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this up. So on my manifold, I wanna make just three points. So I'll pick kind of, uh, two on either side of the port and you know one on the opposite direction, it's going to make the center of the plane the, the middle of those three points. So always make sure that the points that you're going to probe are going to be uh, a location that's gonna get you close to a theoretical center of the port. And then, just for my rough setup, I'll take my tool and I'm just gonna stick in here and look at where, about as far as I can get in and I'll make three just kind of in different locations, positions with my Sharpie here. And then same thing for just below the seat, I'll make three red dots. So that just gives me a visual of where I'm gonna go and put the probe with the machine. So we'll start with the manifold side. And now what I'm gonna do is I've got the probe loaded in the machine. I'm just gonna go and probe uh, this manifold surface. And for this, you can just eyeball level uh, with that manifold surface sticking up. And then you can just jog the probe over. So I'm above my first point here, and I could just use a, a, a depth probing cycle here on this because it's straightforward and just up and down. And what I'm gonna do is probe, pull up the probe auto center. I have the depth routine here, and I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna probe, and the machine will move, and it's gonna stop with the probe just touching the surface. And then what I'm gonna do here is I have a, a, a port here that I've created. I'm going to go in here and right click on the closed sections and add a new plane. So now this pop-up box for the plan wizard is gonna pull up, and what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just, while I'm touching the locations that I want to, I can tell it point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, I can just see this set current location. So if I click set current location here, it's gonna pick up the X, Y, Z uh, coordinates of where the probe is currently in the machine. And I'll just do this for all three of these points on the manifold side. And again, I'll do a probe auto center, let it touch, that'll be point 0.2. and point three. So once I've got those three points filled out, I can press OK, and that's gonna create my first plane. And so that's my manifold plane right there. Now, we wanna go and get our, our middle section, or as we call it, our dividing line. So the way I do that is I'm just going to jog in here, and this is a manual operation now. So I need to rotate the A and B axes, A being the fourth axis, which the head is sitting on, and B being the fifth axis, which is the spindle itself. And I can also use the linear commands, uh, X, Y, and Z. And sometimes a mirror is helpful with this. Uh, if you don't have a mirror, you end up kind of getting in the machine here. So I'm here just above my uh, first point in the dividing line. On the probe, when it's flashing green, that means it's not touching anything. When it flashes red, that means it's just touching, it means the stylus is deflected. So I'll just go until that's just deflected. And again, I'm gonna add a section. 
I'm gonna set my current location because I'm touching. And I do the same thing for my other three positions. Or two in this case. I'm just touching there. Set that as my second. And then I'm just gonna pick up my third. Right there. So current, again, click OK. And over here we have our, our vector Z button. So when you get kind of down in there, it's kind of hard to, you know, if I just move up in Z, it's, it's at an angle. So to move, retract the tool along its vector, I can use the VZ plus button. Helps to get out of the port a little faster. Because now I want to rotate over and do my last one, which is the, the seat side. So I'll pull out of that. And again, I just eyeball what's facing up on the seat side. And again, I'll make another plane. and that gets the seat side, I can track back out. So now I have three uh, main sections. I've got the manifold, I have the seat section, and I have our dividing section, which will be in the middle. Now, dividing section is where it will come in with the tool from one side, go to that point, and when we come in from the other side of the port, it will go to that point and blend those two sections together. So the next step in this to, to get ready to fully digitize this, where we actually get all the information with the probe, is we only have three planes, and three planes uh, is not gonna be enough. Uh, it's gonna try and linearize between those three sections, so you would just get straight. That's not gonna be an accurate port. So what we wanna do is between those sections, we wanna add more planes to kind of break up those cross sections. Somewhere between you know 11 to 18 planes total for a port usually works pretty good. And the way we do that is we need to go in here and create intermediate planes for probing. So what we do is we'll just turn on the manifold and the dividing line. We'll create our intermediate planes. Since that side's longer, we'll do, uh, let's do 11 on that side. And then what I can do is I'll turn off all these other ones that I've just created now. And then in between my dividing section and seat section, I will create intermediate planes and we'll just put five on that side. So now this has created our intermediate planes in between, and we can turn all these closed sections back on. And that sets you up. So that's the basic setup for getting this ready to digitize. After that, we now go in and we can let the machine just probe, and it's, it's going to just step along at each one of those planes. So it'll start at the manifold plane, it's going to step along, and it's going to basically, you know, whatever it senses, it will create a circular type feature, and then it'll move down to the next plane, that next intermediate plane, it's gonna do the same thing. Um, we can control the spacing in that, we can, for how fine the resolution is, more points, more data, that's more accurate, it will take longer. Usually we do somewhere around uh, a 60, 50 or 60,000 spacing between the touches, and that gets you pretty good data, uh, and, and from then on we can, it'll, it'll basically, you'll see here in the next video, from that point on, once we have all those points and all those cross sections, the, the software will automatically stitch that together to make a surface. So uh, in the second half of this section, we'll go over that.